Welcome to Special Education with Ahmed Nakvi. Today we are going to continue with the topic we started yesterday and the topic was introduction to in linguistics. In this part we are going to discuss phonetics and phonology. Before we start let's recap. Yesterday we uh, talked about the basic concepts of linguistics and in that we defined what is linguistics. And we said linguistic is the study, uh, is the scientific study of language and it focuses on sounds, words and structure of uh, words, sentences, meanings and uh, grammar rules. Linguistics studies human language what is its nature, how it works, and how it is put together. This is what we defined about what linguistics is. And then we uh, talked of at the tail of the lecture, what are the components of language. And in that we mentioned that language uh, uh, consists of three main uh, uh, parts, sound, structure and meaning and in sound uh, we have phonetics and phonology in structure we have morphology and syntax and in meaning we have semantics and pragmatics today we are going to discuss in detail what are phonetics and phonology so here we are phonetics and phonology this is the starting point of uh, today's talk. Phonetics is the study of human sounds and phonology is the classification of those sounds within the system of a particular language and uh, uh, languages. So this is a uh, difference in shape that phonetics is the study of human sounds whereas phonology is the classification of those sounds. We are going to discuss them in greater detail as we move on. First, let us take uh, phonetics and the word phonetics uh, is derived from two words. The word phone, which means sound, and tics, which means scientific and systematic study of something. So it is general study of all human speech sounds, how they are produced, transmitted and received. Now please uh, note this point that in phonetics we stress upon and minutely uh, uh, go into details how, uh, how are, uh, the sounds are produced, number one, how they are transmitted that is the uh, quality of uh, that uh, sound and then how are they perceived or received uh, by the listener. From here we have a uh, deduction and that is uh, there are three main branches of phonetics. Based on this definition, how they are produced, transmitted and received, there are three branches of uh, phonetics. One is articulatory phonetics, the other is auditory phonetics, and the third is acoustic phonetics. One by one again, articulatory phonetics, what is it? It is concerned with the position and movement of lips, tongue, and other speech organs. Now the speech is uh, produced, as we all know, uh, with the help of speech organs, and main are lips, tongues and uh, uh, the vocal cords. So uh, articulatory phonetics goes into details of all the sounds and tells us how, what are the different movements, what are the different positions of lips, tongues and other speech organ when a particular sound is being produced. It analyzes how the various speech sounds are articulated by our vocal or, uh, organs. 
Then the second part of phonetics is auditory phonetics. And auditory phonetics is the study of hearing uh, and the perception of speech. This is uh, phase two. And then the acoustic, acoustic means relating to sound. Acoustic uh, phonetics, this branch of phonetics concerned with the properties of sound waves. As we know, uh, sound waves have uh, three properties. Uh, it is, uh, we are not going to uh, uh, detail in the physics of uh, sound at the moment. It studies the physical properties of speech sound as transmitted between the mouth and the ear. So, after uh, seeing three uh, types of, of phonetics, now we move on to phonology. Phonology is a broader study of major speech sound and their organization or classification in a particular language. As we all know, in English language, uh, we classify a, a different uh, English uh, sounds in two major parts, or uh, we, uh, we have, uh, uh, can say three also, consonant vowels and the third, um, you may add, uh, diphthongs. First, let's take the consonants. A consonant is a speech sound in which the air is at least partly blocked, at least partly blocked, whereas a vowel is a sound in which there is no obstruction found. While we are producing uh, some uh, speech sound in vowel, there is no obstruction at all. Whereas in uh, consonants, some degree of uh, uh, blockage is there. And the air passes through the cavity freely in case of uh, vowels. A consonant is classified in terms of places, manners of articulation and voicing, as we uh, discuss, whereas a vowel is dis, uh, classified in terms of position of tongue, the part of uh, tongue and the lip uh, rounding. This may clarify it further. As we said in the previous uh, slide, you see it here, consonant is classified, uh, uh, that is marked in red highlighted in red, a consonant is classified in terms of places, manners of articulation and voicing. So here is a chart you can see yourself that uh, uh, here uh, the, uh, there are, uh, as we said, there are 24 consonant sounds. You can count, these are 24 and here they, they, uh, they are uh, placed and classified as they are for instance, this sound and this sound, they are plosives as well as bi uh, 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 bilibial. They are plosive as well as bilibial. Whereas this is uh, this sound, these sounds, two sounds, are plosives as uh, as well as alveolar, uh, right? And uh, this uh, sound, these sounds, uh, uh, two sounds, they are plosives as well as velar. So these are 24 consonant sound, plosives, uh, fricatives, affricative, nasal, lateral, or uh, frictionless. And uh, on uh, uh, this column, you can see bilabial, uh, labrodental, dental, uh, alveolar, uh, post alveolar, then uh, uh, plateau alveolar, then uh, plateau, then alveolar, and then glottal. So, uh, according to places, manners of articulation and voicing, these are uh, uh, 24 consonants are sub uh, classified in these uh, categories. This is how they are produced. This speaks of how the uh, 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 position of different uh, speech organs would be. As we have uh, already mentioned, English has 20 vowel uh, sounds, 
including monothongs, short angle on vowels, and diphthongs. Now, these vowels can be further uh, categorized. These 20 vowel songs in in these uh, 20 uh, uh, vowel songs out of these uh, songs, 12 are pure vowels, including short angle on vowels, which are mostly described in terms of position of tongue, part of tongue, and lip rounding. Further explanation, we go into greater detail. These you can count, they are uh, 12 vowels. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. They tell you according to uh, position of tongue and part of tongue and lip rounding. Right? The way they are placed, you can make out uh, close, half close, uh, half open, open and front, central, back, this is how, this is a long song, double E, almost double E when we write it, but these are places of different vowels and they are pure vowels, pure vowels are in 12. Then diphthong. What is a diphthong? Diphthong is a single vowel consisting of the features of two vowels. Its most important feature is the glide from one vowel sound to another. The two vowel sounds are combined and uh, it glides from uh, one vowel sound to another. Basically, a diphthong is a glide. The, uh, the uh, diagram which I am going to show you just now in that you are uh, going to see eight dip, uh, diphthongs. See this? These are eight diphthongs. As is uh, in this pair, this is one pair, this is uh, another, another one. And these are eight diphthongs, which we have as the sounds are in uh, these words. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight different uh, tongues here. Now another, uh, besides vowels, consonants, and diphthongs. Every lang language has some super segmental features. Now, uh, consonant, vowels, and diphthongs are called segmental. Whereas uh, there, are, uh, uh, there are other features which we are just going to mention. They are called super segmental features uh, in, of English language. Super means above or beyond and segments mean sounds here. And super segmental is a term used in phonetics and phonology to refer to vocal effect. Now what are those? Pitch, stress, tone, intonation or juncture which extends over more than one sound in an utterance. So not only the uh, meanings uh, would uh, be affected by uh, these super segmental uh, features but also uh, the form uh, would also be affected. So pitch, stress, tone and intonation we uh, take them one by one. What is pitch? Pitch in speech is the relative highness or lowness of a tone, which depends on the number of vibration per second uh, produced by vocal cords. Now, we, uh, as I said, I am not going to into uh, uh, detail uh, in phys uh, physics terms. What uh, what is pitch? Uh, which is uh, number of vibration per second produced? That is uh, called pitch, but from uh, our point of view, that is a linguistic point of view, we hear a high pitch when the rate of vibration is high and we low, uh, hear a low pitch when the rate of vibration is low. How it affects the language? Especially it affects uh, tonal languages like Chinese. Pitch is used as essential component of pronunciation of a word and change of pitch may cause a change in meaning. In such languages, if uh, the pitch variates, 
even the meanings change. So this is the uh, first supra segmental feature of English language or any language for that matter. Second is a uh, tone. Tone in linguistics is a variation in pitch of voice while speaking. There's a difference uh, between this in tonal uh, 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 difference between tone and pitch. In uh, tonal uh, languages, the linguistic function of tone is to change the meaning of a word. Here an example is given. And that example is from a uh, Chinese and the word ma said with a high pitch means mother. And the same word if said in low pitch means hemp, right? Hemp in Urdu we call it bhang. So uh, uh, changing the uh, pitch, uh, mother would be changed into hemp, that is bhang. That is the importance of tone. Now stress. Stress is a term used in phonetics to refer to the degree of force for making a louder or longer used in producing a syllable. Stress can be on a single word also, stress can be on uh, the uh, phrase also and in uh, uh, variation. So in terms of linguistic function, stress is often treated under two different headings. Uh, that is word, lexical and sentence. In intonation. Intonation is a pitch variation at sentence level. It is the way the pitch of your voice goes up and down. Now, intonation is very important. A same tone throughout may be boring, may not be impressive, but intonation would increase, improve the impact of a speech. An example of intonation is the way your voice raises in pitch at the end of a question. That is one example. Now, a few other terms which are very relevant from a phonetics and phonology point of view is for name, phone, and all of, all of uh, phones. For name is the smallest meaningful unit of a sound. Please differentiate between the th uh, three. A phoneme is the smallest meaningful unit of a sound. Therefore, small uh, and in language, this meaningful unit uh, uh, is one that will change one word into another. An example, a, a very common example given in your books also, that is the word in the word light and right. L and R are two sounds which are phonemes. If you replace I, G, H, T with R, it would be right, and if you replace R with L, it would be light. So phoneme is the smallest meaningful unit of a sound. If it is replaced, it would change the meaning. Then allophones is a definable systematic variant of a phoneme. They are phonemes, but they are there is a shade of difference, and that shade of difference, those uh, allophones, when used, would not change the meanings. Such here are the examples given. S sound in words like sail, still, and spill, or in words like seed, steed, and speed. Now, the, uh, concentrate on the uh, sound of uh, S in these uh, words which are mentioned here. There is not much of difference, but there is a shade of difference. They are allophones. K sound in words like key and car. T sound in words like true and T. N sound in words like tenth and ten. If you carefully analyze these words, you should find that the specific sound is not exactly the same as I've said before. But since these variants do not change meaning, they are called 
allophones. So that is the difference between phoneme and allophones. Now the third word is phone. The phoneme is the part that is stored in your brain, right? When you actually produce a sound, you are producing a phone. What is stored in your mind is a phoneme. When you actually produce that word, that is a phone. Example uh, here is also given. You want to produce a, a sound for a small four-legged animal that mews. That is, we, we call cat. Your, so your brain searches for the word and then it produces it. You see the pho uh, pho uh, phonemic representation, the word is written in slashes, cat. Then you use the vocal cord to produce the sound that is given in brackets, that is K-A-T, and you get the word cat. Phones, the actual sound part that you can hear. What, is, what are phones? Phones are the actual sound part that you can uh, uh, you hear, are marked with brackets, and the phonemes, the mental representation of the sounds are marked with slashes. So this is the difference between uh, all three. See you with part three soon. If you are new to this channel, uh, please uh, subscribe and uh, click on icon so that whenever the third part is uploaded, you get immediate notification for that. Stay blessed.